Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, hello? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Do you hear? Can you hear me? Okay. It's not really loud, but. Okay, so welcome to this session. Um, this is um, to, to, to present and discuss um, a process that Euridic, the European IGF, has uh, launched at its uh, last meeting in June in, in The Hague in, in the Netherlands. My name is uh, Thomas Schneider from Switzerland. I'm the, the chairman of the Euridic Association, which is like the organizational backbone of, of Euridic, kind of the, um, and uh, so the idea was uh, Euridic was held a few days, Secretary General's high-level panel report was uh, published in June, so um, there was a feeling that there should be space to discuss, comment, analyze, agree and disagree with the content of, of that report and in particular, of course, with the content of the recommendations. And then Euridic decided that we'll uh, open a, a window on the website uh, to uh, comment on the report. And there were two ways of commenting, so people could either comment in a generic way with a, sending a, a document that was then published as a PDF format uh, or on, on, uh, in the way they wanted, or they could comment on every single paragraph electronically. Uh, there was a comment function where you could say, I like this, or this is important, or this is missing out something, and so on and so forth. So that was, that was the process uh, that was launched um, after the Euridic in, in The Hague uh, until early October, mid-October, people were invited to make comments. And this session is now here to, to present you uh, give you a little bit of an overview on, on what we received. There, you find it, everything online, of course, on, on eurodic.org on the website, and there are some copies of, of a, a paper synthesis document uh, on this. And it was, it was important for us that we would design this as an offer for people to talk to each other. It was not meant to act as a gatekeeper to channel or, or influence or manipulate any content, it was really, the attempt was to, to give a space. Other spaces have, have been added, like there was a, a, a similar exercise done by the IGF Secretariat, and, and also in, in other spaces there were, there were opportunities to discuss. And so the, the only thing that, and with this I will hand over to, to Mark, was to try and synthesize the whole thing in a way that it's digestible, but it, it was, the attempt was not to modify or, or do anything to the substance just to make it accessible and make it readable. With this, I'll hand over to, to Mark Carvel, a former UK government representative, now um, in, 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 the, uh, in his free area of his, of his lifetime, and we are very happy that he uh, was willing to support us uh, in this exercise, in this fundamental role. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, Thomas, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, great gig last night, uh, Thomas. And, Thank you. <laughs> uh, and really appreciate your uh, coming here to, uh, to listen to our uh, account of the uh, consultation we did on the report. Maybe you ought to play Wish You Were Here again to get some more, <laughs> get some more people in. Anyway, um, so uh, I was uh, very pleased to help the Eurodig uh, team out at the invitation of Sandra and Thomas with preparing a synthesis of uh, the responses we received to the consultation, as you said, during, uh, during August to October. Um, we received 
about 25 responses, um, which is pretty good, fairly, fairly diverse. Uh, we, the European institutions responded, uh, the Council of Europe, European Commission. We also had responses from uh, a number of, uh, of European governments, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Netherlands, Switzerland, and uh, my former colleagues in, in the UK uh, government. <clears throat> we also had contributions from two national ITFs, Croatia and uh, Ukraine, and also a number of non-governmental organizations, uh, such as uh, European Broadcasting Union, RIPE NCC, the uh, regional internet registry, and uh, also a number of uh, broader international NGOs uh, provided inputs, which we very much welcomed. And the European stakeholders uh, participate very actively in those international NGOs, so that was a valuable contribution. They were valuable contributions for us to receive from ISOC, uh, International Chambers of Commerce, and INTA, for example. So, um, what I've what I've done, as, uh, as Thomas has described, is kind of pulled together uh, primarily main areas of, of agreement uh, in, uh, amongst all these uh, responses to the report and, uh, and its specific recommendations. Now, there are, we do have actually a few physical copies on the table here. Maybe, did you mention that, Thomas? Yeah. Uh, but also, of course, it's online, as you said. Um, I, I don't uh, plan to go through everything in, in detail in our relatively short uh, session, but I'll just uh, highlight a few key, uh, key uh, points. Um, and, and generally, the response from, from, from the European stakeholders was one of, of great support for the initiative of the UN Secretary General in convening a, a diverse high-level panel of experts and it, at a very timely opportunity given the, uh, the change in digitalization across the world, rapid uh, evolution of new technologies, AI of course uh, in particular. So the report was very much welcomed and um, in particular stakeholders welcomed the, f the focus on achieving greater inclusivity through universal uh, affordable access so that nobody gets left behind. That was a, obviously a very important, valuable uh, objective for, for the panel and, and, uh, and the work of the, of, of the panel in, in devising recommendations on how to achieve that. And also the report's focus on ensuring fairness and respect for human rights and security in the online world, very much uh, welcomed. And crucially, crucially, that the development and the implementation of digital technologies should be undertaken in a sort of holistic, balanced, transparent, accountable, and human-centric way. All these were, were messages uh, of the panel which uh, the respondents to the, to the consultation greatly welcomed. Um, the, the stakeholders also responded in, in welcoming the emphasis on the importance of flexible, multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary uh, cooperation through flexible, inclusive, agile processes and mechanisms. So again, very much uh, supportive of the direction uh, and the approach taken by the panel in emphasizing multi-stakeholder approaches that uh, you know, have achieved have, have, so, have achieved so much since the WISIS back in 2005 and have become institutionalized in a way. And we, we, we witness it here, of course, in, in Berlin at this uh, fantastic uh, IGF here hosted by uh, the German government. Um, and stakeholders strongly supported the recommendation of, of looking at where there are deficiencies and gaps and strengthening these existing processes and uh, institutions and mechanisms and not going down the road of creating new ones. The, the panel stuck to its intention not to do that and that was very much appreciated by, by the respondents to the consultation. Um, 
<coughs> I'll turn now specifically to, to the, the issue of architectures for global digital cooperation. If, if, uh, if you've seen the panel, uh, the panel's report, you see that it sets out uh, three possible architectures for, for di di global digital cooperation. Uh, firstly, the IGF Plus proposal that everybody has uh, not unexpectedly focused on here at the IGF. And that, uh, just to recount briefly what the panel are saying, they're saying that there are deficiencies in terms of uh, effective, broad participation, particularly from governments and, uh, and uh, business. The IGF Plus will try to address that and also ensuring that there's more and broader participation from developing countries across the world. Uh, the IGF Plus concept also sets out some additional sort of functionality, if you like, in terms of specific um, uh, new mechanisms within the IGF uh, structure. Uh, policy incubators, cooperation accelerators, an observatory and a help desk. So, the, the response from the European stakeholders is basically yes to support that uh, approach to sort of updating and revamping the IGF through addressing those problems about uh, not fully inclusive uh, levels of participation and, and looking at how to produce effective outcomes that could be actionable perhaps elsewhere. I mean, the IGF is actually as you probably well know, has moved in that direction already with the, with the best practice uh, fora and, uh, and uh, the dynamic coalitions, all that work. It's, it's, it's in the direction of producing more meaningful outcomes from the valuable dialogue that takes place in all the sessions and workshops at the IGF. So the panel uh, was respected, I think, in terms of looking at, at the IGF and moving, that direct, moving it in that direction a bit further with some additional functionality. But of course, that does raise the question of how the financing of the IGF can be undertaken to, to support that. It's, it's, all, it's well acknowledged that it's been a bit of a struggle to finance the IGF as it's currently devised, relying on donor contributions. Not enough uh, business uh, stakeholders coming forward to step up to the plate and support, <coughs> support the IGF with, with financial support. And there could be more governments uh, doing the same as well. So this additional functionality uh, of, the, of the IGF in, in the IGF plus concept is going to really bring that whole challenge into sharp focus and some of the respondents uh, to the consultation by UADIC noted that there's got to be work in terms of ensuring greater financial sustainability of, of the IGF. The other two options um, didn't uh, receive much support from the stakeholders. They were, if you recall from the report, this uh, concept of a distributed co-governance architecture, co-gov, as it's, as it's uh, styled, uh, which would be, a, as I understand it, a horizontal framework structure of cooperation through a system of, of networks and support platforms. Again, with a particular focus, as I understood it, uh, on, on ensuring that uh, technologies from start to finish, from the design stage right through to, to implementation, implement uh, norms and, and uh, values that uh, uh, everybody is expecting in, in terms of, of internet uh, and digital uh, technology development in the future. So a kind of loose coordination approach is what uh, COGOV uh, is, is uh, an, uh, conceptualizing. But as I say, not much support for that. Maybe uh, there's a need for further clarification of exactly how such a, an architecture would work. The third option uh, was uh, described as a digital commons architecture that would synergize efforts by governments, uh, civil society and businesses to ensure promotion of sustainable development. Uh, there was <clears throat> no support for that uh, really, other, other than interest in, in how that concept might, might be developed. Um, the sort of analogy <coughs> with uh, the law of the sea and, and so on, that this uh, uh, would, would try to uh, draw on was not a convincing one uh, in, 
to, to most, uh, most of the respondents who commented on that specific option. So the, all, all the respondents pretty much went for the uh, IGF plus proposal and uh, we'll see how that conceptually will develop and how the challenges of financing it will, will, uh, will be addressed. Um, I don't think I've got time to go through all the other recommendations in, in the report. I, I would just highlight that uh, under, under, under one, uh, with regard to access and uh, digital public goods, there were, uh, well, access, full support. Under digital public goods, questions about what the scope of that would be. This is recommendation 1B. Um, 1C on digital equality, women and marginalized groups and how to, uh, how to deal with that in, in terms of a call for all stakeholders to address this issue. Widespread support, no question about that. Metrics under 1D, um, again, uh, there was obviously support for the whole approach to ensuring metrics are going to serve the interests of uh, decision makers and policy developers uh, and, and uh, uh, explain how technologies are successfully being developed and implemented in the interests of development and, and, and in, uh, ensuring nobody gets left behind. But um, a, a sense that, well, there's a lot of metrics going on already. Uh, UNESCO's universal indicators, you know, was, was a very significant uh, area, a, a very significant initiative. How can uh, the existing uh, sources of metrics be coordinated was one of the questions raised in responses to that particular recommendation. Recommendation two on help desks um, at the regional and global level. Questions about how, again, those are going to complement existing uh, networks of help desks. Would this be actually uh, undermining the effectiveness of those uh, help desks that already exist? Um, I'll move um, now to recommendation four, which is where I think most of the uh, negative responses focused because this is the one with regard to uh, developing a global commitment on digital trust and security to shape, as, as the report says, a shared vision, uh, um, identify attributes of digital stability and so on. Respondents said it's obviously important for the, for the panel to have focused on security, but uh, very um, anxious that nothing new is established in terms of a, uh, a, 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 an agreement or even a treaty-based approach to, to a commitment on digital trust and security. And many of the respondents referred to all, to all the valuable work that's already been going on uh, with the Paris Call, the UN, government, uh, UN group of government experts and so on. So there's a lot going on in that area. This would probably be a risk to a lot of that existing valuable work for another, another process in terms of a global commitment to be initiated following the panel support. So that's the, that's the difficult one, I think uh, I would underline. Uh, and then recommendation five, well, I've talked about the IGF plus as the favored option. I'll just finally say that uh, generally respondents were quite keen to see a better integration with the UN system of uh, this whole area of, of digital uh, collaboration, cooperation, and governance. And uh, there was 100% support for the uh, proposal to, to, to establish a tech envoy post in the Secretary General's office, who would undertake a lot of the oversight of how coordination was happening and ensure system, uh, ensure across the UN system, cooperation and digitalization issues were addressed in a, in a, in a holistic uh, uh, manner with everybody really looking to existing mechanisms of cooperation such as the IGF here or the IGF plus if that does, does uh, uh, achieve um, reality uh, and, and the tech envoy position would be supportive of that. So the final recommendation of a holistic approach to, this is 5B I'm looking at now, holistic approach 
uh, for cooperation and regulation, step with the rapid development of new technologies and so on, that was, was supported by uh, all the respondents to, to, the, uh, to the consultation. So we, it's now, the, this, this report is, uh, analysis of the views is now out. We're submitting it to the UN uh, process. Um, we've talked about it at the session on uh, Tuesday morning, with particular reference to the, uh, the architecture options. So uh, UODIG will continue to track and ensure that European stakeholders, in, in concert with other stakeholders across the world, include, especially in the Global South and developing countries and communities, work together to, to implement the, 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 uh, those parts of the report, most of the parts of the report, that are going to ensure more effective collaboration uh, worldwide in a holistic way um, in, in, in the coming months. There are roundtables being established and, and we should ensure that European stakeholders have that opportunity to participate in those uh, roundtables and working groups that uh, the UN are setting up to take forward the panel's uh, report. So I, I think I've covered tried to cover the main points that came out of the consultation. I hope that's been helpful. But we can take questions and discuss elements of it as, as, as you think fit. So I'll, I'll stop there for now. So the gentlemen are handing over to me. My name is Sandra Hofer. <laughs> My name is Sandra Hoferrichter. I'm Secretary General of the Eurodic, and the Secretariat was basically assisting Mark in doing his work and we would like to thank you for, for that. And it is always also a nice element to keep you in the community since you are retired now. We are very glad you accepted. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone who is retired, you will find a place at <laughs> No, Now, um, actually, we would like to hear from you now um, what you think on the conclusions, if you have maybe uh, read the report yourself, have different views, but possibly did not contribute to our consultation process. I mean, it's uh, still open, the com comment platform, so basically we could still include that, but definitely it will not go into our synthesis anymore. But I think it's an ongoing process and uh, it doesn't stop here. Uh, now when it comes to the implementation, as said, uh, we will also closely follow that process and see how we can contribute as the Eurodic platform. But now I would like to open the floor for you to share your thoughts and ideas, criticism, Ask questions. None? Oh, here. No, we have. Start with Lynn. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lynn Sainamore, chair of the IGF MAG. Um, just a comment that I think what you saw in the Eurodig consultation process mirrors very closely what we saw in the global. Um, IGF consultation. Not surprising as a lot of the, the respondents were, were the same. I also think it um, matches very well with what we heard in the main session on digital cooperation on Tuesday um, as well. So at least with sort of three separate data points, I think there's, there's really good alignment in terms of um, you know, points of, of agreement and, and uh, indications of some departures for future work. Then I had a lady here, and the lady here, unfortunately, you go first, and then you follow. Hi, uh, Ingrid Volkman, University of Melbourne, so not in Europe, obviously. Um, but I have a question, I'm an academic, and I'm wondering, because we really need new kinds of knowledge production in this world, in this digital world, if there were any discussions how to, to, uh, or to define like a recommendation based on an increase of university collaboration across Europe, perhaps, or? Did universities play a role or academia play a role at all in these recommendations? I see uh, civil society coming up and perhaps education, but education could relate to schools, not necessarily to research. If I just take that briefly, I'm not specifically in terms of collaboration across the academic community. I don't uh, think that was um, picked up in the panel's report. But the wider issues of skills and education and so on were very much there as an important uh, challenge to be addressed to ensure that uh, everybody who, uh, you know, as access increases, that people have the skills to be able to develop uh, and, and to, 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 use, to use these new technologies in ways that are going to enhance their uh, lifestyle and well-being and uh, 
commercial opportunities and uh, community opportunities more widely. If I, if I may just uh, add to that, it's, uh, we're seeing an increase raising of national boundaries among uh, research foundations. I mean, in Australia, it's all about Australia. If I wanted to uh, create a project dealing with global policy makers, they would say no, no, no. And the, I think the same in some of European countries. I'm from Germany, I know a bit of that infrastructure. So I think for EU to pick this up and enhance for the next generation, this sort of collaboration would be great. That's all I'm saying. Maybe uh, just to make sure that, that we understand. Uh, so. The UN high-level panel's report is, is one thing, and what we did as Eurodig and, and Mark in, in, as, as the person was to collect comments on the report. So, but I understand your question is not on what we did, but on the report itself, just to, to make that clear that we are talking about the same thing. And uh, I happen to be with the panel because uh, our former president was a member of, of the panel. And there were uh, academics in, in the panel, for instance, Jean Tirol was one of them. Uh, so the panel was a multi-stakeholder panel, and so you had univer university people in the panel, you had techie communities, you had government representatives, business, civil society, and so on. And of course, this, this was discussed. And, and I mean, what you see in the report is, is a condensation of, of quite intense discussions. They had subgroups on, on, on about six subgroups on, on, on themes, and there were lots of papers produced, there were lots, lots of contributions. They also had like a comment rounds or calls for input. You all see this on the website. It's called, I think it's called digitalcooperation.org or something like that. You can assess all the materials. So you get a little bit more insight about what the issues were that were discussed, what the different events were and what the contributions were. So that, that was covered. But of course, then the recommendations uh, the a report and their recommendations focus on what they thought were the key things or the key takeaways that where the most need for action would be. So not everything that was discussed is equally prominently reflected in the report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for the report that I still didn't have the time to read. But um, I was wondering, and also from the point of view of all the replies that you gather, um, whether the, the issue of, uh, of the report not covering environmental and climate change issues has come up uh, among the respondents. I'm sorry, I'm forgot to mention that I'm from the external action service, European external action service. Yes, if I take that one. Yes, a very important point, and it, it did feature in uh, a number of the responses that there was uh, no real um, deliberation in the panel's report on climate change and environmental issues and the impact of digital technologies and so on. And I actually mentioned that when I spoke at the uh, Tuesday morning session, that that was, in the view of European stakeholders, an, uh, a serious omission uh, from the panel's report. I don't know, Thomas, you want to, is, was there any uh, you know, background uh, discussion that, that the panel uh, undertook on that particular area? Oh, thanks. Uh, well, the, the, uh, <clears throat> of course, the discussions were confidential, so, uh, so that the only people who were there knew what was discussed. But um, again, many things were discussed, but not everything made it, it, its way in, 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 in the report. But there were also things that were not discussed and, and, and not in the report. Sometimes it also depends on, on the composition of people, on dynamics that, that somebody starts something. So it, ex post is also, we probably would have asked ourselves, why, why is there nothing on this? But if you're in a process, maybe suddenly, yeah, there's a uh, focus on something and not on other things. So, so I wouldn't, yeah, we just take note that this is not a, not a visible issue in, in, in the report. Of course, using ICTs and using the internet for the SDGs, if you take the climate as, as one element of the SDGs, I mean, that the whole development and sustainability of development issue is, of course, there, but it's not specifically uh, pointed at, thank you. Christine, uh, would you like to use the mic? Yeah. Yes, uh, my name is Christina Aguida. I'm, uh, I work for the Egyptian government. And um, my question is, since the consultation was facilitated by the Eurodic, um, and, um, and you mentioned that the IGF Plus was one of uh, uh, the things that received a lot of comments, and the IGF Plus uh, model in the report talks specifically about building on the strengths of, uh, of the IGF and lists the NRIs as one 
of those trances. So my question is, uh, did, did the responses that you received, did they go further into how the, uh, this building on that strand in specific of the NRIs could be explored, what could be done with the various four um, uh, models, uh, I mean, uh, components of that model that are there? Because the report doesn't say much about that. So, thank you. Yes, I, I would agree. There isn't much, um, certainly not much discussion about the role of the national and regional IGS in the ecosystem of internet governance. There is some reference to the, uh, e the uh, um, evolution of, of uh, the IGF model at the national and, and, and regional uh, level, but no discussion about how that uh, would, uh, would possibly uh, develop and evolve. And we. Uh, the the Euridic partners, we will need to look at that, I think, in terms of um, uh, if, if the IGF Plus proposal is taken forward, what would, for example, Euridic as a regional IGF uh, do in terms of sort of keeping in step, if you like, with the IGF Plus and, and its additional functionality and so on. Um, so that's it's a, it's a very valid point. It's... Um, the national and regional IGFs have grown remarkably, and the numbers are very uh, impressive. And it's, you know, they have an important role in feeding up into global discussions, and also for the global discussions to be cascaded down to uh, to communities, especially those communities that find it difficult to participate actively uh, in the global IGF. Uh, and I, th I think we've underlined that point in discussion. Well, from when I was in the UK government, we underlined that point in our interaction with, uh, with the UN and at the time of the WISIS plus 10 uh, review. Um, Thomas or Sandra, did you want to add? Um, I, I would just like to add, in case you haven't yet heard, right after this little meeting, starting basically at 2 o'clock, we will feed into a discussion with regional IGFs, but also national IGFs. Um, Luck IGF, for instance, just went to a review and how this report is, what does it mean for, for NRIs? How does it bring it forward? What are the elements that we could take out? So there's just after this a very informal discussion about these ideas. Maybe you can dedicate that time and stay in the room. Any other questions or comments or ideas how to move that forward? that project. Okay. Mark, Thomas, any closing remarks on this? Um, thank you. Uh, uh, other than really just to underline, this is a significant step. It's at a crucial time in terms of the, uh, the mandate for the IGF is sort of halfway through uh, uh, and anticipating um, a review of the WISIS outcomes in, uh, in, in uh, five years' time. Um, and uh, I, I expect there will be a lot of focus on how to refine the multi-stakeholder processes. But we should all be alert to, uh, from, certainly from European stakeholders' perspective, to the risk of the essential bottom-up multi-stakeholder driven mechanisms for, for governance not to be compromised in any way. Uh, for example, for the IGF Plus, if we were to take on uh, any uh, significant decision-taking function, that would be something that needs careful examination to ensure that there isn't a deviation from the multi-stakeholder model which has a proven track record. So I, I would just underline that, I think. Thank you, Mark. It just, um, I think it's on, on the process that, that led to, to, to this uh, uh, publication, I think it, it, it is a valuable exercise just to give space for people to discuss also on the, in a written form that, that uh, you, can, you can do online and not just those that have the opportunity to physically participate in meetings. So with this, I would uh, again thank Mark that he uh, offered to, to, to help us with this and we hope that there may be other moments where we can do similar things to, to trigger a discussion <clears throat> and to contribute to, to the further development of, of the digital cooperation architecture. So thank you. And, uh
thank also you for dedicating your lunch break time. We are now taking a five minutes bio break and waiting for other NRIs and regional IGFs to arrive and then we will continue the discussion, basically take it from there. So stay in the room if you are interested in that or, or enjoy your lunch. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I think we should continue now. This is the informal gathering of first regional uh, IGFs, but also nationals are invited and, and partners and those interested. Since it is in, called an informal gathering, I would kindly ask you possibly to come to the table because it feels a bit strange. The room is so big and people are spread all over the room. I think that would create a little bit more of a cozy atmosphere. <laughs> And um, then I would, to open up, ask for a show of hand, basically, so that we know who's in the room. Um, who is a representative or who is involved in a regional IGF? Okay, very good. Who is involved in a national IGF? Very good, and others, I guess, are just interested individuals. That's a good way of starting from, and I would ask uh, Raoul to open up because he was one of the persons who had that idea to organize that session. Uh, uh, thank you, Sandra. I will uh, modify slightly the, the first question. So I say, who is involved in the organization of uh, one regional IGF? Okay, good. thank you. Uh, can you, because uh, we are very few, so maybe those who raise the, their hands can, can say from uh, which regional IGF you are, and your name, please. Artyom Garien of Central Asian IGF. And? Ignacio Estrada from LAC IGF. Who else? Ein Rodewald from Eurodic. Sorina Delanu, Sidig, Southeastern Europe. Predrag Tasaski, uh, North Macedonia IGF. North Macedonia IGF, Macedonia IGF. Regional ones, we have the Central Asia, uh, LAC IGF, Eurodic, and, and, and Southeastern Europe. Yeah, Okay, and we have also some nationals, including Macedonia. <clears throat> okay, the, the, the idea that the, the, there are several things that are happening in the field of internet governance from the point of view of the governance itself, uh, because everything that happened here has, is related with internet governance, but we are speaking about the second word now. <laughs> and so the, one of the things that we can see is that, that the, there's a lot of discussions about the, the improvement of uh, IGF and the, this uh, proposal of uh, the IGF plus. So, um, so talking to, with uh, Sandra, we think that this is a, a good motivation also for discussing among the, the regional IGFs to see what are the, the, the natural uh, changes or evolutions that the, that the regional IGFs uh, should, uh, um, should uh, deal with. And we have an example that is the, in Latin America, we conducted a, a review, an open consultation about the LAC IGF, and I will talk about that now. And also other thing that is happening, and that Sandra will cover uh, later, is, uh, is the, all the consultation on the uh, high-level panel on digital cooperation and the process that will start from now, from today, so in the, as, a, as a consequence of that consultation. And this is something also that, that the regional IGF should be involved in. And we have a very good example with uh, what uh, the Eurodig has, uh, has done with uh, conducting a, an open consultation within the region. So, let's, uh, so those are the motivations uh, for having this meeting and see how the regional IGFs uh, could cooperate uh, more and better is, uh, with in, in front of those uh, challenges. So let me let me speak a little about the, the what we did in in, in Latin America. <coughs> um, sorry, I closed the file by accident. Um, I have my notes here. Okay. So 
there, there was a, a, a um, um, general feeling in the in, in the um, in the region that uh, it was time for uh, for conducting a review. It's not that the it's not the case that the that there was a crisis with the, with, with the lag HF. All the contrary, the meetings of lag HF are very well uh, attended by many people from different stakeholders, but some. Some things uh, started to uh, to come up, and the, the perception that the the, the participation of governments uh, was uh, reducing, and also that uh, other stakeholders were uh, participating, but with the involvement of people of lower level in some uh, in some cases. So we started this uh, consultation process that was uh, very successful, uh, almost. Uh, uh, about uh, 160 people participated in the in the consultation through individual interviews, uh, through open uh, meetings online that were conducted in three languages, the three languages that are more uh, popular in the region, English, Portuguese, and Spanish. And there were, and also with some face-to-face uh, -face meeting that were held, uh, taking advantage of uh, other important meetings in the region. There were two big uh, um, things, uh, agreements. One is that the that the that LAC IGF uh, continue being very valuable for the regional community, and the second finding, is in big terms, is that the uh, most of the people agree that this is the time to introduce some uh, changes. And we uh, introduced those. Uh, we classified those uh, findings in six uh, categories. Uh, participation, the contents that are being discussed, the format of the discussions, and uh, the structure of LACHF itself, the intersectional work, and the uh, funding. In terms of participation, I will go very, very, very quickly through the through the findings. But uh, I um, I recommend you to read the report that is online in the the website of LACHF. That, as you can guess, is LACHF.org. Um, <clears throat> So in terms of participation, there was a claim for more outreach to advertise better the, 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 the forum, so more people is aware of what is uh, what is like HF and can be en engaged in the, in the processes. Uh, there was a, also a, a proposal to have all the agenda speakers and details of the, of the meetings available with uh, more time in, in advance. Uh, especially the governments uh, emphasized on that point, and also the governments uh, asked for more formal communication between the LAC IGF secretariat and the, and the governments uh, using formal channels like uh, Foreign Affairs uh, Ministry. They say that's, uh, that without, without those uh, the formal communication, it's difficult for them to become engaged and justify travels and the time that they spend in, the, in participating. There was also a proposal for implementing high-level uh, sessions in the, uh, during the meeting, um, those uh, in terms of participation. In terms of contents, and you can see the, all the links between the, the regional discussion and the, and the global discussion, because the, more or less the, the, the things that come up are, are very similar. The, there was a, a, a request to have more uh, focused uh, agendas, to contemplate the diversity of the region, and it, it means that the topics that can be interesting for one uh, country could be not interesting for another country in the region because there are different uh, level of developments in the in digital development in the in the region. So, the, uh, for some countries, can be pushing only for the uh, topics that are on the edge, but uh, those uh, those topics are, are not the topics that are in the the daily um, uh, challenges for, for other countries that are developing a little slower. So they claim to have a, a, a diverse uh, agenda that contemplate the interests and the realities of everybody. That the, the LAC IGF every year conducts uh, an open consultation to define the, 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 the main topics uh, for the annual meeting. But there was also a claim to combine those uh, open this open consultation with uh, co more formal consultation with the local HFs, and also with uh, formal consultations to the uh, to organize the stakeholders, including governments. So it's, uh, that's the the, the, the the agenda could um, uh, um, is, could be uh, produced in based of the, all the, the, the consultations of all those uh, different channels. Uh, there, there is a, a, a rough consensus in, in terms that the, the, the LAC IGF should produce more concrete outcomes. Uh, there are some views about what the outcomes should be, how the outcomes should look, 
And the more the, what people say, uh, majority of people say, is that those outcomes should be in the form of uh, principles, uh, general guidelines, identification of priorities, and um, the, the way forward. So this is the, this is the issue that we have to, to, to deal with, and the, the solution is, uh, is in, in this way and not in this other way. Um, and also there is a, 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 a big claim that uh, the contents and discussion should not be repeated from one year to another year. There is a perception that some issues are always in the, on the table and, are the, and the discussions uh, uh, don't depart from the conclusions from the former, from former discussions, but start from the scratch uh, uh, again. In terms of formats, this is a, I think that this is the, the, the issue that gets uh, more consensus is that that people uh, ask to have more interactive uh, formats and more innovative sessions uh, conti to continue with experiences like uh, breaking out sessions, but also having discussions without moderators or debates or even role, uh, role games and, uh, to, to, uh, to engage uh, more people in the discussions. Uh, the, it's, uh, it's very boring just, uh, the, this is what people say always, it's very boring to go to meetings to sit for two hours to see four people that is uh, also talking among them and there is never enough time to, uh, to open uh, discussion. There is also a, a, a claim to not, re not to repeat the um, speakers and moderators and to be more transparent in the selection of panelists and, and speakers. As, as you know, that's a, a, if you, those of you who are uh, involved in the organization of these kind of meetings, sometimes you are running uh, against the time trying to, to, uh, to organize a panel, a session, looking for panelists, and so that's a, a, it's done in good faith, obviously, but the, the people that is, the attendees have no idea how the, the panelists were selected, and they say, okay, I, I, I could have contributed to this discussion, but I didn't see any, any way to any procedure or any, any channel to propose my, myself as a, as a speaker. Uh, in terms of intersectional uh, work, uh, there's a proposal to have uh, virtual working groups. Nobody proposed, fortunately, to have more face-to-face -face, uh, meetings, but uh, yes, to have more work online, to implement uh, more effective tools for collaboration, and uh, to communicate better with other forums, uh, the regional and global forums, in order to uh, put push the conclusions of the, of the discussion, but also to, to receive incomes, uh, to receive, uh, sorry, inputs from the, from the other processes and, uh, and forms, uh, and, to, and to implement uh, better repositories of information. And in terms of a structure, there is a, the LAC IGF is conducted by a program committee. Here, it's a, a Nacho is a, a Estrada is a, one of the members of the one outstanding member of the program committee, <laughs> and uh, there is a, 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 an ask to have um, more leadership and visibility from the program committee, but also to define uh, roles within the program committee. For example, to have a chair, something that you have in Eurodig, and uh, so the, there is a, somebody that is visible, like uh, the point of contact, somebody with uh, talk uh, whom uh, that. Um, also, that the uh, better criteria, more uh, clear criteria about the eligibility and processes. The, the process uh, currently in LAGHF to elect is based on, on the or, um, organized stakeholders. So, organized stakeholders are um, the ones that who uh, submit names and propose names to be part of the program committee. But the, a large community is also asking for more opportunities to become involved in, in that level. And there is a significant, uh, um, a significant uh, support to the creation of a dedicated secretariat, as also as Eurodig already, already has. In terms of funding, the current funding based on, on donations is, uh, is uh, seen as a, as, a good, uh, as a good model. Uh, there is a, a common understanding that if uh, LAC IGF uh, continue being relevant or become more relevant for the region, so there will be always people interested in to contribute. But also there is a, a door open to analyze uh, other complementary me uh, models of membership. There are, so based on that, there were uh, several uh, concrete uh, proposals. 
to, to start to implement some of the, the recommendations. And since that, the, the, the program committee has been working on, on implementing some of the changes, and this is the, 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 where the process uh, lies uh, at this moment, is uh, that the, the, some of the things are being considered and being, uh, the, the, the Black IGF is moving forward in implementing some of the, of, of the changes proposed. Um, so I'm happy to answer any, any question, or, but more than that, I think that it would be interesting to hear from you. What are your, your, uh, your thinking about the changes that the regional the IGFs should introduce and how they can become more relevant in, in the respective regions? But before that, as I say, there were two motivations. One is the, the review of the processes uh, themselves, and the other is the, the relation with the, with the digital cooperation consultation. And so, Sandra. Without going too much into detail, first, if there are any questions or clarification to Raul, I would suggest we take them now, because you just referred to it. Are there any questions on this consultation process? Okay, you might not have been aware of this consultation process, but it's really a huge amount of work that went into this, and uh, we did a Eurodic uh, retreat last year, 2018, at the beginning also with the aim of improving our processes and uh, increasing relevance and so on and so forth. So I know how much uh, it entails, and then you have some results from a discussion on the one hand, but how to implement them, that's another challenge in terms of resources that are or are not available, and also in terms of um, participation of the, of the community, because of course the, the platforms, the secretariats, the coordinators, they can only uh, set the, the ground, but the input has to come from the community. Um, so one thing that I, I didn't clarify, that's the, in terms of, I say that there was a, a, a significant support to the creation of a dedicated secretariat, is because the current model is very similar of the Asian Pacific Regional IGF. There is an organization that uh, uh, holds the, the responsibility of running the, the, the secretariat. In the case of Asian Pacific, it's not Asia. In the case of uh, Latin American Caribbean IGF, it's LACNIC and Kevin and Paula works both in LACNIC and they are in charge of the, of the Secretariat. So the, when I say that there is a, a support to create a, a, a permanent uh, dedicated Secretariat, is, uh, it's not because the, the people is not happy with what LACNIC is doing, but it's because uh, uh, people feel that it's the, 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 the process, the, 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 the forum is uh, mature enough now to have its own uh, secretariat, more uh, technical, and not only focused on the, uh, on the logistics and the, all the o operational uh, things uh, that are behind the, the luggage. Like so, so, okay, so I would summarize, we are united in diversity. <laughs> and possibly Anya can confirm that because she has the overview of all the national and regional IGFs. Um, I mean, united in diversity means we have different associate structures. Some are just in the process of setting up a structure. I know the German IGF, for instance, they just founded their association yesterday here at this forum. Others are still thinking about or are struggling. I, Italy is in the process of uh, forming an association. At Eurodic, we have an association, but I well know that some IGFs don't want or don't need an association because they have a body that takes care of. But I think we have all the same challenges to deal with, and this is the big question as the global IGF has to deal with as well. It's the uh, challenge of being relevant for policymakers, basically. It's the question of do we need more or other outcomes, and also of the question of engaging uh, more diverse stakeholders. There are some differences in terms of how transparent IGFs or national or regional IGFs are perceived, and possibly also differences on how on the process and on how to get input. Uh, some re regions and nations are really good in getting input, others uh, see challenges here as well. And in, in the light of these uh, commonalities and uh, challenges and differences that we have, and also in the light of the discussion that we had here on the UN level, UN panel report on digital cooperation. 
And the fact that it seems there is a big support for the IGF plus model. I was looking a little bit in more detail on what the IGF plus model entails and was thinking, not really to the end because that's why we called for this meeting, basically we were thinking how far could we as national or regional IGFs go and maybe adapt, early adapt already some of the elements that are proposed in this report. And uh, here I would like uh, to name them again for you in case you are not so familiar with uh, what's written in the report. The IGF plus model would comprise an advisory group, a cooperation accelerator, a policy incubator, and an observatory and help desk. Basically it goes very much down to the early ideas of uh, what was in the mandate of the IGF. All of these functions were kind of mentioned what the IGF should or could do, but I think it was never really institutionalized. It's still totally underfunded and understaffed and therefore all these um, elements that have a name now here in this IGF plus model, um, they could be or should be possibly set in place when uh, there is a broad agreement and a decision about moving forward with the IGF plus model. I repeat them for you an advisory group, something similar is in place with a multi-stakeholder advisory group, a cooperation accelerator, a policy incubator, an observatory and help desk. These would be the elements that form the IGF plus. Going a little bit more into detail, what a cooperation accelerator, it would accelerate issue-centered cooperation across a wide range of institutions, organizations, and processes, identify points of convergence among existing IGF coalitions, and issues around which new coalitions need to be established, convene stakeholder-specific coalitions to address the concern of groups, such as government, business, and all these groups that we know, the media, women, and so on and so forth. So though they open it up a little bit more. Basically, that um, is a function that the global IGF is at least partly already doing, and also the national and the regionals. But of course, that could be improved. The policy incubator would incubate policy and norms for public discussions and adoption in response to requests to look at the perceived regulatory gap. It would examine an existing norms and regulations could fill the gap. If not, form a policy group consisting of interested stakeholders to make proposals to governments or the decision-making bodies. It would monitor policies and norms, source feedback from the bodies and adopt and implement them. I really think that's kind of a new element and uh, would like to hear from you how you think this could be implemented or if you think it should be implemented in your regional or national IGF. Then the observatory and help desk would direct requests for help on digital policies such as dealing with crisis situations, drafting legislation or advancing policies to appropriate entities, including the help desk described in recommendation to coordinate capacity development activities, provided by other organizations, collect and share best practices, and provide an overview of digital policy issues, and so on and so forth. This basically is uh, also a new element that would look into the region or into the, into the uh, world. What is there, comprise all these activities, in particular when you think of capacity building, and you know, possibly all know these summer schools that are around summer and winter schools on, on internet governance, comprise those initiatives. And basically that's the big question for me now, uh, anticipating that the IGF plus model is the one that is the most interesting one and the one that gets the most, uh, so the most, um, how to call, S support, <laughs> thank you, the most support, um, how far should we or could we go or how you feasible you think uh, are these recommendations and would, they be, would that be something that you could think of implementing in your region and, uh, and um, adopting them? And with this, I would open the floor for questions, comments, and I try to trigger the discussion a bit. Oksana, please. 
please remember your name and so on. Thank you very much, Oksana Prihodka, uh, Ukraine uh, member of uh, uh, IGF UA steering committee. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to discuss this issue. Uh, I would like to um, tell you about uh, Ukrainian experience. We had plenary session uh, at our uh, tenth uh, IGF UA, which was held uh, in September this year, devoted to this report. Uh, Roberto also participated in the session, thank you very much, uh, and we sent our recommendations, thank you very much for including them into your report, but uh, I would like to um, give you another example, at the same um, IGF UA we had a session devoted to the implementation of uh, European Electronic Communications Code. Um, in Ukraine, there are a lot of uh, uh, concerns that uh, implementation of this uh, legislation will be uh, very dangerous for uh, small Ukrainian ISPs. We have nearly 7,000 of, uh, 7, of ISPs. And uh, um, uh, this uh, discussion uh, became the example of uh, your recommendations uh, just now because uh, um, um, both internet providers, uh, both parliamentarians which are responsible for this legislation and of course civil society actively participated in this uh, discussion. And now we have working group uh, in Ukrainian parliament, uh, also multi-stakeholder, really multi-stakeholder group, and we are working together on uh, draft of Ukrainian code of electronic communications. So, Oksana, let me ask you a question. Do you think the issues that you just described, would they be addressed with one of those uh, proposals that are on the table, possibly the policy incubator? Are you saying that the policy incubator is basically what you have recently established in the Ukrainian parliament? Absolutely. Okay, interesting. Uri? Yeah, the, my name is Yrjö Lajipuro from uh, ISOC Finland. I'm active in the Finnish Internet Forum and also in Eurodic. Uh, when I first read these uh, proposals, including IGF Plus, and I saw all these names, uh, accelerate, accelerators and incubators and so on and so forth, I thought, oh my God, I'm f really, fine names, but uh, another battle about what actually they will be doing and who will be sort of <laughs> on these bodies. We all know that in all international settings, the, the real fight is about who will be where. So, uh, but I mean, I think when I, when I looked uh, sort of more closer to the proposal, I think that these are precisely the functions that have been missing, that the IGF has been missing so far. And that's uh, perhaps what has done uh, IGF uh, so far a little bit sort of uh, slow, slow thing to, to row, like a, like a boat that is too big. Uh, I, I would say that, for instance, in Eurodic, we actually in a way have these functions in a sort of proto forum. Uh, for instance, the work that is done by the uh, subject matter experts, of which I'm, I'm one, I, I think that we, uh, we, we do a bit of both, this uh, accelerator and, and incubator work. So, so wishing, wishing uh, good luck. I, I hope that not too much time will, will be used for these uh, Debates. I mentioned. I mean, what exactly will be done by by each of these bodies, and 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 uh, who will be be there? Uh, I mean, I think that the forum. I mean, what these uh, they have, have to get started, and then then somehow get uh, sort of settled into what the role of each, the detailed role of each of these bodies. Thank you. Thanks, you. More comments? Please. Um, thank you, um, Sandra, for in the, 
your, your co-chair for this meeting. Um, it's like breaking down the whole report to where it will affect. Oh, by the way, my name is Mary Uduma. Um, I represent the West African IGF as well as the Africa IGF. So, um, you know, as I was saying, that it, it, you broken down to a level that we could put our hands and see, just like the last speaker said. Uh, the only issue is that for now we are struggling to to sustain the regional uh, and, uh, and regional IGFs uh, and uh, or continental IGFs in terms of funding and in terms of expertise. So I think uh, we would have want to see something on capacity building that will help actually the regions that are not you know, that are not pulling weight to, to be up to date with others. Secondly is that uh, at the African level, we already have what we call the policy and regulatory uh, development and agenda for, for the region and uh, observatory is part of it and the policy regulation uh, platform we are building where we could, we could get information and share information. But the truth is that um, at the regional level, okay, we, we still have uh, some issues of uh, sustainability and buying of the, unlike the Euridic, where the European Union is strongly supporting, when it comes to West Africa IGF, the ECOWAS region, we have not had those buy-in. Well, I am looking at if the UN, at the UN level, that they are going to help us uh, drill down the, uh, and um, uh, inform them to be to uh, put in more, more support for us or get their buy-in and understand what we are doing. And, and uh, so, so, so as the last speaker said, the, all those functions who and who will be responsible for them, uh, we are just struggling with one, what the rest. For, at African level, I, pretty much we have some some uh, mechanisms that could take care of this, but at the sub-regional level, I think that's where we have challenge. Well, I want to thank you for bringing in that. We have broken it down to the point that we can have a handle on it. Thank you. Gentlemen over there. Hi, good day. Kevin Swift from LACNIC, but I'm just going to comment as an observer to another process in the Americas, the Caribbean um, Internet Governance Forum. Interestingly, when I saw the recommendation um, with the supporting orgs under IGF Plus um, for a policy incubator, um, I drew a parallel with something that existed in the Caribbean IGF process for a while, which is something called the Caribbean IG Policy Framework. It's an active document um, that is worked on at, the, at every IGF event. So besides the organization of panels and sessions, there's a part of the process dedicated to working on this framework on select thematic areas, um, relying on the expertise of experts who attend to the event and the participants who are there. And I find that very useful because the Caribbean has a number of challenges numerically. You have disparate levels of development within that small block. Um, but it does serve as a good um, template or a good um, starter for smaller economies who do not have a footing in some areas, let's say cybersecurity, but at the same time they do have plans to chart into digital waters and they are trying to build themselves digitally. Um, so the one thing I would say, um, similar to the gentleman, I think he's at the back comment, the challenge we have with that is that it is a good fodder to, to start um, policies, digital policies, but um, in the Caribbean context, it's still somewhat challenging to transpose that, those recommendations into the actual tangible policies at the national level, and that is because of um, political reasons. But um, I just wanted to um, just comment on that because I see a lot of value in, in, in that mechanism itself. I'm not sure many people are aware of that being part of the Caribbean process. We've always looked at outcomes as updating the framework, but um, there are the other challenges that will come in who supports it and how it transposes into um, tangible or implementable 
items. Oh. One comment from myself as a personal comment is that uh, it's uh, something that I said um, Tuesday in the main session when this uh, digital cooperation was discussed. And the, um, with regard to this policy incubator, one thing that I have realized in the last uh, couple of years working with different groups, uh, stakeholders and countries, it, is that there are many places where things are being discussed the same uh, or uh, things that are connected in, uh, in agendas that are connected. And so while we are discussing an issue here, probably there is a, a, a committee in UN or a group of countries discussing something or OECD producing uh, recommendations on the same topic. And some of those recommendations, in fact, will be implemented uh, soon or in a, in a shorter term that, uh, that the, ter the time that we need in IGF to produce a recommendation or getting kind of a common approach. So the, the policy incubator is, a, a, is one thing that, uh, that's a matter of concern to me is that it should be conceived as a, as, uh, as a should not be conceived as a, as a top-down thing saying, okay, this is the only place, so we have, a, we have a challenge, I don't know, artificial intelligence or privacy or whatever, or, or DNA security. Or, so we meet here, so we create a frame for developing uh, policies, and this is what we spread around the world, because it's, it's, it will not work, because at the same time there will be other people working on the same issues and also developing policy proposals and policy approaches. So the, the only thing that this policy incubator could be useful is if it fills that gap. That is the gap of, of proposing uh, policies or proposing frames for policy, but connecting the dots, the, the, the things that are being, the discussions that are being held in different parts of the world by different group of people, different stakeholders, different countries. So this is uh, something that, same, same uh, concern, this is something that is, uh, is, is close to us because it has to be with the regions, is that the concept of regional hubs. Is that this concept of regional hubs that has been mentioned many times is something we don't need the uh, UN or somebody else or to create regional hubs to help, uh, or regional help desks to help the, the <coughs> norms. Because in every region there are already a lot of initiatives. So what we have to do is to, is to in, 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 in any case, is to work with the different initiatives and stakeholders in the regions to achieve a much better coordination in terms of uh, developing the, uh, facing the challenges in terms of policy. So what I hear from, from your comments is that basically some of the elements you see already existing, at least in a slight way, in your region, and for some elements you are rather see challenges. Anya, and this is not, uh, we didn't speak about this before because this just came to my mind when listening to the comments. I have the feeling that national and regional, and particularly the regional IGFs, should sit on the table when these issues are going to be discussed in round tables. I know that there are now round tables are set it up under the leadership of certain governments or so on and so forth. I really think with the experiences that is in this field of national and regional IGFs, those people need to be on the table. And maybe we could think about how we, or if we, send a recommendation out of this informal gathering that this should take taken into consideration and that this should take place. Because we have experiences in the region working with the people on the ground that made experiences in a positive or a negative way that possibly can contribute to a much, in much more detail than uh, maybe the people that will convene for reasons, I don't know how they will be chosen. Do you think this is something that we could do, or do we not? Would that not? Would this meeting not be give us legitimacy to do so? Yes, thank you, thank you, Sandra. But I actually think it's a very good starting point, and you know how we operate. Whatever decision is being taken in the group, we do work. If we don't have an opportunity to meet in person, then we meet virtually. Uh, in an on, uh, within an online meeting. Then we go to the list where everyone are subscribed just to clear 
what the group has agreed on a call and see if anyone would object or anyone would like to um, add any updates to it. And with that, the decision is made through our usually bottom-up consensus. So I think this group made um, some excellent ideas, concepts, could maybe um, take it forward to give it a form and then maybe consult all other NRIs to see, or if you want to keep it with the regional IGFs, uh, consult other regional IGFs that are unfortunately not present here just to see if they would endorse or they would have something against. But I fully agree with you what you said, that the NRI discussions should go much beyond on the level they are now, which is usually NRI to NRI. And I think especially on a local level, so you, get a, you gave a very good um, comment this morning on the NRI's main session when you suggested that we use this momentum here to connect the NRIs to their parliamentarians, to their legislators. And hopefully that will maybe build on some long-term collaboration between the legislators in the country and the actual still very unique processes in a country that I think are very much growing. I've also, the meetings that I've visited, which is, which is a very few, but still, I mean, the impressions are great that I have. They do have high level presence, political presence, so, for example, when I went to the West African IGF in Gambia, the minister was there all the time, the minister in charge for the ICTs. And not just the minister, but the minister actually did such a great favor to the community. The uh, secretary general of the ITU was in the region. He was, I think, in Senegal or something like that. And then the minister invited him to that meeting. It was a complete surprise for everyone. But it made such, a, a, such an impact to the meeting. And later, when I spoke to DSG, he, was, he wanted to learn more, to know more what's happening. He was especially interested in Pacific region, what is there. So I think that's the key, that that face-to-face, -face, first of all, contact that we can make. And I think every momentum we could use, we should. Uh, producing a document would be excellent. That would be some kind of a political document that came out as a consensus from the multi-stakeholder compositions of the NRIs. And uh, well, Cengeta is there, he can he can confirm, but um, you know, we will definitely support whatever is the view of the NRI's network as long as it's, it is within the IGF framework, its principles and procedures. Excuse me. Uh, I, I will go very soon because I have another appointment. But I just want to raise two issues. One, um, there is the regional uh, parliament as we have it, ECOWAS parliament. And there is the national parliament. So at the ECOWAS level, what you're saying about connecting with the parliamentarian, at the ECOWAS level, there's an ECOWAS parliament. So for regional, yes, we could um, try, because ECOWAS is our secretariat, get you know, some synergies, some collaboration. Uh, but at the, at the um, national level is another one, is another, another level altogether, so nationals could get connected with their they are parliamentarian, but I am um, I, I'm a little bit withdrawing about, um, I don't know, this informal meeting of regional, um, are we creating another level, another layer, okay? Because we have the NRIs, um, are we now going to differentiate between the nationals and the regional? That's where I need a clarification, please. Uh, Anya, maybe you clarify for me, or, or, or San, Sandra, since all of them normally are supposed to be on equal footing when it comes to the network of the NRIs. Are we trying to do another layer? I just want a clarification, sorry. Maybe I'll respond to that first because of why we are initiating this. Um, I totally agree, it's, and, and, and it should not at all touch on the equal level of the regional internationals, but there is a difference between the work of a regional IGF and the work of a national IGF. On a national level, you deal with uh, issues that are very down to the people that have a very national focus that is held in the language uh, of the country. And for Europe, I can say that in particular, it's hard for me to go around the national IGFs because they speak languages I don't understand. And it makes no sense for them to change to another language that I understand. So. On the regional level, you agree at least on an overarching language most of the times, and also the work is different because you are covering or you are looking into the issues of a region. And that is a big difference, and it has nothing to do with being not equal or like this. It's just a difference that we can address. 
and therefore Raoul and I, we decided to uh, get this gathering of regional IGFs. Of course, everyone is invited. These are open meetings in order to discuss from our perspective how we perceive the work that the LAC IGF did, but also the report on digital cooperation, how we perceive that being relevant for our development. And I think it's our, our right as regionals to come up with a suggestion that can be up for discussion on the list. And um, maybe it is, and, and, and honestly, it was not our plan to come up with something like this. It was only an informal gathering. But what I hear is kind of also surprising to me that many elements that are here recommended in this report uh, are already in, not in, I wouldn't call it in place and definitely not under these names, but elements like these are already in the regions in place and I think when the discussion on these reports is going forward now and when these round tables are formed, I really think and believe that uh, the regional and also the nationals for other issues should be on that table. And if we don't make that very clear, this will not going to happen. And if we take too long for any uh, administrative processes in terms of, uh, well, we have to find agreement and then we start a discussion that goes down to the road. Sometimes you have to use the momentum and I think we have a momentum here in this meeting and maybe we can take that to the mailing list further and uh, come up with this recommendation there. And I mean, it, come on, it's a recommendation, it's something, please include regional and national IGFs in the discussion on the round tables, that's it. Anya, the question was also to you. Well, yes, I mean, ever since I started working with the NRIs, maybe I don't have that kind of profound historic knowledge of the NRIs because, but Mary, you would know, and Sandra, you would know as well because you were there almost from the beginning when all these processes started. But in any case, as I said, so ever since I, was, I came, there were those narratives that were uh, present in the network that um, maybe the regional, some of the regional IGFs would like to be, I'd say, more above some of the national IGFs. And through my work, to be honest, I did not see that. That is really not, not even from a single regional IGF, and I'm very close with the, not just the coordinators, but some members of the steering committee, which is very important to me. And with maybe even more important, the community members, because you hear the feedback, how people perceive the process. I've ne any kind of piece of work coming from the regional IGF did not support that argument. Just quite the opposite. I do think that they, but we were very outspoken, it is true, the, the whole UN side, but I think the network as well, that all NRIs, national, regional, sub-regional, and youth IGFs are equal. There's, there are no reporting mechanism between, there's no hierarchy, we only feed into each other processes because we're keeping each other informed and we, um, we're learning from each other, exchanging best practices. So I think over the years we managed to kind of include that understanding um, on an individual basis with the NRIs. But on concretely on this, um, I don't see that we're creating Mary, any new processes or that we're creating any new networks in a network. That's why I told Sandra, I think this meeting could be a starting position, but others need to be consulted. I think that's critical because we don't want exclusive small groups to be creating anything new. And I think that's, that's the process. I don't expect that anyone would object on that. And I think it's just very critical that the network, aside of, aside of the secretariat as a very neutral facilitator, that the network is proactive on a, on a kind of political scene of the internet governance and actually say, you know, we, do, we have these outcomes, we have tangible outcomes, we can actually help you. And I think some, some kind of streams in certain countries have already recognized that. You would know that, Mary, if you look at the Nigerian IGF, if you look at the, like the Gambian IGF, for example, specifically that region that uh, the ministers are present, you have communication with the legislators as well, in addition to non-government stakeholders, which are equally important. So that's how I see it. I don't see anything negative in that sense. I don't see any exclusive processes. I just think that we all have to you know, come up with good ideas, take action, use the momentum, as you said, but uh, yes, always consult the whole group. I think that's important. I want to bring one example, what we did this year on the third uh, annual meeting from Macedonian. From Macedonian. Uh, um, um, just 
I got a sign that we have to clear the room soon, so please keep your intervention yeah, very short. Yeah, I will be very short. short if that's okay. So our uh, example this year, we decided that each year from now on, we will invite one regional um, IGF from the neighboring countries. So this year we invited the Albanian uh, representative from Albanian IGF, and it was quite interesting retrospective uh, point of view, where she provided a very interesting outcomes, what was in Albania, and things what has to be done in Macedonia, and what has to be done in the region. And of course, this was actually one of the uh, first po point why we did initiate it as we need to start cooperating out of our borders. We need to have more uh, cooperating and to work together. And nevertheless, if the languages are not the same or different, that doesn't have to be a uh, stopper. Okay, thank you. I think that we have to free the, the room, but I think that's the, there are some a couple of clear conclusions that uh, that there is a, a, an appetite to collaborate <laughs> and to work more together. The, um, I agree with my colleagues that that is not an intent to to diminish the importance of the national uh, IGFs or the opposite. And but the regional IGFs have things in common that uh, it's an opportunity to collaborate to strengthen the cooperation. And the regional IGF should be part of the of the picture in all this uh, global debate on the future of digital cooperation, but also discussing about how to adapt themselves to the challenges at the, at the regional level. So uh, I think that Sandra's idea is very good, and we can continue working and coordinating with Anya to see how we can move forward this. Please. Also, thank you, Raul, and uh, what Anya said was basically also a very good closing remark. I think I went a bit too far with my idea, and I promise it just came in my mind when we were sitting here and I was listening to you. But I also think maybe we should uh, establish a li little bit more the exchange among regionals, because they are dif different than, than nationals, and uh, reiterate this had nothing to do with uh, putting one over the other. It's just that we have different challenges, and sometimes they have to be addressed. So. I will try to keep up for another meeting and maybe we can think about um, another mailing list, I don't know. Uh, we will take that with Anja and uh, take it from here. I thank you for your participation and for dedicating your lunch break. Bye.
hier wieder was Falsches. Hallo. Hallo. Hätten wir eine Gruppenschau machen können. Ach so.